2020 Mazda CX-5. New car, let's get into it. Hi, welcome, Daniel, Tech Studio. Now, the specifics. This is a 2020 Mazda CX-5 Grand Touring, so almost fully loaded. As for numbers, this is actually not the turbo. This is the base 2.5 liter engine, which delivers a staggering 187 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque, connected to an absolutely like mind-boggling six-speed automatic. Is it fast? Fuel economy, I'm looking at 25 in the city, 31 in the highway. In my like two or three months of having the car, these numbers have been pretty much right on the money for me. Also, it is forward wheel drive, not all wheel drive. Now I can already, I can, I can already smell the comments complaining that I didn't get the turbo and the all wheel drive and just the boo boo. -hoo. Relax. Okay, it's my car. So why did I choose this? Um, out of all the options out there. Why did I go with this? Well, lots of reasons. I was looking for a compact SUV to step up from the Corolla I've had for quite a while now. This has all the tech and safety I was looking for. So Android Auto, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, dual zone automatic climate controls, moonroof, stuff like that. Now for other options out there, I was actually looking at the RAV4, but holy hell, have you seen the price for just a base model RAV4. I could not find one for under 30K, like period. So that was another huge factor in my decision. This right here, as it sits, 63,000 miles was 22.5. And again, I was cross shopping against cars like the Hyundai Santa Fe RAV4, and this Mazda was the cheapest one while still checking all of my boxes. Still might be too good to be true. I'll update y'all if anything goes wrong. Okay, so let's deep dive into this thing. Let's check out the exterior. I love this car. It is honestly one of my favorite car designs of all time. I'll just let the B-roll do the talking. Truly like like a, a timeless design. Mazda made an instant classic with this one. A massive W on four wheels. The front face is definitely my favorite part. From the side, we see the really quite long swooping hood. Now this long hood, I feel like gives it luxury car proportions. Mazda in general have a premium, almost luxury like quality to them and i think that really starts in their exterior design appreciate the 19 inch wheels out back we do have dual exhaust tips which are real by the way no fake plastic nothing love that appreciate that oh yeah led taillights and headlights and a cool design here is that the front and back light design are literally mirrored same exact design in the front and the back. They designed it so good they had to do it twice. <laughs> Overall, back end looks good. Probably not the best of the best, but it works. Okay, now on the inside continues the premium feel. Everything looks nice. Where hands frequent feels nice. As for dimensions, 
Uh, there's no other way to put this. It's kind of small. This whole SUV is shorter in length than a Toyota Corolla. Fun fact. And you can feel that inside. We do have tons of foot room though. That helps to make the tight space feel more accommodating. There are some amenities for the back seat though, like a back seat pocket. We have rear vents. The chair slightly reclines. <laughs> we got a center console with cup holders, a phone holder, and a tiny, tiny little sliver of storage with USB ports. Definitely this back space is for two adults. Good luck fitting three people back there. Now, the rest of the cockpit is great. Materials, fit and finish, excellent. We have a hybrid digital and analog dash that I wish was a bit more customizable. We only have like five or six screens to choose from, but it, it, it gets the job done. Our infotainment is the Mazda Special with the scrolly wheel down here and the screen up high. Again, luxury car vibes. The seats themselves are fine. I have driven CX-5s before for short periods of time, and I always felt like the seats were too hard, but after having it for a few months and multiple road trips, the seats are actually pretty comfy. My butt doesn't get sore, so that's all that matters. I do wish the lumbar was more aggressive though. It's pretty weak. We have a regular moonroof, which is better than nothing. We have our dual zone automatic climate control with heated seats with an electronic handbrake and brake hold. Brake hold is something I didn't know I needed and now I can't live without it. We have the media controls and directly behind that we have the cup holders. Honestly, it's not a good place for them. Right next to the buttons and right where your arm rests is not an ideal position for them to be, but I appreciate that they're in the correct orientation, east and west. There's never any question on whose drink is whose. Storage is a bit limited. I really wish there was more to be honest, but it's enough for me. If I had a purse though, that might make it a little bit, a mm, little bit iffy. Honestly, I wish every car had that RAV4 shelf. Uh, why doesn't every car have shelves? Why not? Uh, anyways, we have a actually pretty large glove box, decent sized center console, bit of storage up front. I can fit a 32 ounce water bottle, no problem. My only gripe about this interior is there is zero ambient lighting in here, like zero. At night it is pitch black. I can't see anything, nothing at all. All I see is just the buttons and that's it. So I grabbed one of these USB lights on Amazon. Solves the immediate problem, kinda, but we find better lighting in the competition. All right, now my favorite part, the tech. We do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay standard. This right here is the deal breaker for me. This car didn't have this, I wouldn't have gotten it. Once you're used to using the wheel, which took me a while for me because I've never used one before, it actually gets to be a bit easier than using a touchscreen. For USB ports, we have four of them, two in the center console and two in that mid seat. We have three 12 volt outlets, so two in the center dash and one in the cargo area. We got the Bose sound system and it sounds fantastic. The base is strong without it feeling muddy. It's great. This car actually did come with navigation, but here's an actual pro tip. Ready? Okay. If you have a Mazda without navigation, you can just buy navigation on Amazon. It's literally just an SD card. Like that's literally, that's the navigation. And you can get that little SD card from the dealership. They'll charge you around 400 bucks for it. Guess how much it is on Amazon? Guess, like guess, get $30. $30 and it's the most up-to-date map. So you can get one like every year for the life of the car and still pay less than what the dealership is going to try to charge you for a 2020 SD card. So 30 bucks, newer, better maps, pro tip. What else? There's so many things on here that are automatic. We got auto up down for all four windows, auto hind beams with swiveling headlights, which I was not expecting at all. I thought that was a luxury car only. Thing, but here we are. We got auto rain sensing wipers. Also did not know that was a thing. We got auto tailgate, auto dimming rear view mirror, walk away auto lock. So you don't even have to lock the doors manually. You just walk away and it'll lock for you. Now to unlock, you do gotta press the button. I wish it just sensed my hand on the handle like other cars, but that's fine. <laughs> 
Mazda makes the most crucial active safety tech standard, at least the crucial ones for me. So that includes full range adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring and warning, front and rear collision warning. Fun fact, did you know the IIHS made their side crash test even harder starting in 2020? The Mazda CX-5 was our top performer in this inaugural round of newer, tougher side impact testing. And the CX-5 was the only compact SUV to get a good rating in that test. This thing also got a top safety pick plus award from the IIHS and the NHTSA gave it five stars. So this is one of the safest vehicles on the road, period. Really big reason why I chose this car as well. Mazdas are driver's cars. Zoom, zoom, and all that. You remember that? Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom. Remember those commercials? Zoom, zoom. I remember those. So then how does it drive? It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. The first thing you notice when you start driving is actually the steering feel. Because who would have thunk there is actual steering feel? It's not light and useless like every other SUV. There's purpose to it. It's, it's commanding. When you turn the wheel, you know exactly what the wheels are doing. There's a bit more effort in turning the wheel, but I really like that. It makes it feel like the steering is tangible in a way. And it really is. There is very little play in the steering wheel. When you turn that wheel, you can tell exactly what the wheels are doing and where they're gonna go. Now in motion, this is a really nice place to spend time. I will say though, the ride is a little bit firmer than I'd like, but this thing was made for road trips because it feels the most comfortable cruising around at 70 miles an hour. Since I've got it, I've done that trip from the Bay Area to LA twice, and man, is it a treat to drive. It just glides along completely unbothered. The seats are comfy and heated. The full range adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist add a really thick layer of confidence that you won't crash honestly out on the road or even in stop and go traffic it's more like you're monitoring the car than actually driving it i will say though this engine makes me wish sometimes that i that i did get the turbo instead you will never need to use more than 25 percent of the gas pedal like ever because it won't downshift no matter what you do <laughs> unless you're in manual mode oh there's paddle shifters did you know that i, I forgot it. i forgot to mention that yeah paddle shifters Anyways, I have a feeling it's because of the six speed transmission, just not having enough gears. If this had an eight or a 10 speed, downshifting to get that power would be much easier. So I don't completely blame the engine because when you do give it that 25% gas, it accelerates, you know? It goes fast, not really, but it's enough. So that's pretty much it for now. I really love this car. Love? Am I in love? I really like this car. Can't wait to bring you along on all the updates to my personal vehicle. So is the Mazda CX-5 on your shopping list? If it isn't, I highly recommend you test drive one. It really does feel like a luxury car, but for way, way cheaper. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.